Yo, today I'm gonna to be sharing one of my recent favorite tricks in After Effects that's incredibly powerful to make color palettes like these, or like these from a recent animation I posted on Instagram, using just a single effect. Once you learn how to set it up, it's actually super easy to use in pretty much any scenario. And at the end, I have 20 of my personal presets that you can download for free and use in your own work. Let's get into it. All right, the effect. What is it? Well, it's called Colorama. It's pretty much the same thing as gradient maps in Photoshop if you've used that before. In essence, it takes the luminance of your image or all the brightness values of the pixels and assigns them colors based on what you choose. Shown here is an example of a few palettes interacting with a photo I took to recolor it. And this is what the effect looks like by default. Now, I have it turned off right now, as you can see, but my setup here is just a gradient ramp with the default gradient ramp effect, and then an adjustment layer that has Colorama on it turned off with one of the drop downs opened. So if I turn this on, you can see that the colors go kind of crazy, but you can see that it correlates here where the colors on the wheel match to the colors now shown on our gradient. Before we actually change any of the colors though, I wanna show some of the settings so we know what to focus on as we're going through this. As you can see, there's quite a few settings here for input and output and modifications and pixel selections. Most of these settings for our use case here can be ignored and we'll get back to this much later, but the main one that we wanna focus on is the output cycle. This is really the beating heart of what Colorama is. I wanna show how to actually change the colors here and it's pretty simple. These triangles here drive the actual colors shown on the image below. So if I drag and move this on our circle, just like so, you can see that the fuchsia one here is moving a little bit, or if I move the blue one, same thing. And if we wanna actually change the colors, we can double click on the triangle and then change it to whatever we want here. So if I change it to this random color here and click okay, we'll see that this section changed. As you can tell though, this is a pretty awful gradient and it doesn't really showcase how Colorama can be used. So we're actually gonna use one of the preset palettes that they have in the drop down here. Most of the presets here I think are pretty bad, but there's one that actually looks really nice and it's the fire preset here. In the output cycle drop down, selecting none, going to fire here, we can see that it actually maps from dark to light here, which is a lot closer to the actual use case of Colorama. Here on the circle, it added a whole bunch of triangles on the outside, which is another feature of Colorama that we can actually use to our advantage, which is if I click in one of the empty spaces here, it'll actually make a triangle. So it'll open up the color picker here and we can change it to whatever color and it'll add a triangle there. And if we wanna remove it, like this color here, we just click and drag off the circle. So using this as our base here, we can see much better how Colorama works. And it's a little bit janky and I'm not really sure why Adobe designed it this way, but it is a pretty old effect. How it works is the starting and end point are actually right next to each other. So the lightest point is right here and then it goes counterclockwise around the circle to the darkest point right here. And this is why I use the fire preset as the starting point just because it has the light and the dark points exactly where we need them. However though, this is too many points. So I'm gonna remove some and we'll start with less points. So let's remove this one, this one, we'll go maybe every couple like so just like this. And now we have a pretty much the same palette, but with less points, so it's a little bit easier to control. And this is how we're gonna actually start to make our own palettes. One important thing to mention is that I'm in After Effects 2023, and if you're not, I would highly recommend updating because they've actually updated the color picker to the more modern, much easier to use color picker. And if you see this color picker, this is the old version, it's much harder to work with, so definitely update to the most recent After Effects if you can. If you're still not seeing the right color picker, even though you updated, go up to edit, preferences general and on Mac that would be After Effects preferences general and make sure use system color picker is checked off. You don't want this checked on and that should fix any problems that you have. So make sure you update After Effects and also make sure that checkbox is checked off. Okay, cool. So we have a good starting point. Let's actually change the colors using some references. There are endless ways to find references, but my personal favorites are with Google Images and Pinterest. And so I'm gonna pull over here, Google Images and show that we can actually just search up gradient palettes like so, and then in our images, we have a million different options. And so let's just pick one at random. I like this one here. I think this is a really good starting point, and this is definitely more colors than we need, but I'm gonna sample some of the in-between ones here. And so a really cool way to actually do this is obviously you can download the image and bring it into After Effects and then sample the image that way. But what I like to do is actually, normally I'd put it on the second monitor, but I'll just put it here for now. What we can do here is actually use the color picker in After Effects to pick the colors without actually having to import it at all. The way to do that is once you select one of the triangles here, and I wanna point out here that it's make sure you're picking the right one here. So this one, we can see the line goes to the highlights here. Sometimes I actually select the dark one since they are kind of on the same spot. But just once you select the right triangle, if you double click and bring up the color picker, you can select the eyedropper tool here. And you can see whatever we hover over, 
previews here on this rectangle. So I can hover over the highlight and instead of clicking, which clicking does actually work, I could just hit enter or return on Mac and it will select that color. And we can just click okay. And so we'll do this on the next color. So I'm gonna double click this triangle, select the eyedropper. Let's pick maybe this blue here. I'm gonna hit enter and then click okay. And then this one, enter, okay. Double click this one, eyedropper, enter, okay. Let's see, we don't need this point. And then on the darks, I'm gonna double click just very carefully, kind of squeezing my mouse in here, double click eyedropper and select the darkest color here and click OK. And we can see now that we have our gradient set up properly. And what's really cool is we can drag the triangles around to kind of shift the amount that we want for each color. So if I want a little bit more of the highlights on this side over here, I can do so, maybe make it more blue and push the purple colors a little bit more over. It's up to you to do whatever you want, but we now have a really nice palette here that took like two seconds to make with some references. Another fantastic way to make palettes is actually using photography. And so I have here open my Instagram and I wanna use one specific photo here to drive a color palette. So I have this actually open in After Effects here in Media. I'm gonna double click to open it here so we have it as a preview. Starting with the same fire preset here with some of the points removed, I'm gonna double click the highlights here Click the eyedropper and let's pick the highlights, which should just be straight white. I'm gonna click okay. The second one, let's select this red here. I really want this red in the palette. And we can see here also, this is a good reference point. The B here is for brightness, which is 79%. We can use this to kind of map where the point should be. So if the starting and end point are zero and 100 right here at the top, 50% would be at the bottom side. So 75 should be about here and 25 should be about here. So it says 79, we can put it roughly here for now. We can adjust it later, but that's just kind of a general reference point as we're selecting from the image. This triangle here, I'm gonna double click and select something maybe like in the middle grayish tone, 50% looks good. Let's move it to the middle. This one, let's change to something a bit darker. That looks good. I'm gonna remove this point because I don't think we need it. And then for the darks, I'm gonna sneak my mouse in here and double click and let's change it to kind of this dark gray. There we go. And now we can kind of drag the points around. I wanna actually see if I add a point here and I sample her cheek, I think this would go really well on the palette. We can move this to roughly where 41% would be and maybe remove this point and we now have a slightly different palette. So a couple different options. We have different colors in the image that we could use. I think I prefer this version of the palette. One great way to test it is to actually just bring in another image. So I have another image from that same photo set from the Instagram thing. I'm gonna drop it into our composition right above our gradient ramp and we can see we have this sort of effect. So it has some pretty tight banding issues. After some tweaking, I changed the palette and removed a couple points to a much simpler palette. I think this looks a little bit nicer. It's pretty cool that it's driven from a photo that I took. Again, you could use any photo as a base. There's infinite color palettes that you can make. This is just a great way to find reference for those palettes. And that's honestly it, like that's the entire setup. I'll show how to save a preset in a moment, but I wanna show first that this can be used on anything. For the first example of how well this can work in your projects, I have here imported my summer edit that I uploaded before this video that has just a bunch of shots, different B-roll and, and things for my travels from the summer. And once again, an adjustment layer with Colorama on it. But I used this preset here that I made myself. And so if I turn on Colorama, we can see that it maps the colors according to Colorama, the same way that it does in Photoshop with a gradient map. Obviously for this case, I, I did include in the edit, but it has a very stylized look. I mean, look at these water droplets. Like This is super cool. And I wanna also show here that you can do some pre-tweaking before you add Colorama. So if I bring up here my FX console and I throw on a levels effect and drag the levels before Colorama, we can actually just tweak some of the settings, maybe make it brighter or something. We can see that we're getting different effects with the highlights and the shadows here as well. Again, it's just up to whatever tweaking you wanna do. And we have like a very grungy different look than before. So turning it off and on, I'm gonna turn off the adjustment layer here. This is the final edit. This is with Colorama. It's a totally different look with literally just one effect and then levels if you wanna use that. I'm actually gonna show here, I'm gonna pull up my FX console one more time, type in Colorama. We can see some of the presets, which we'll get to in a minute. I'm gonna select Tired Blues because I really like this preset. When I select it, it's a different look. And if we go through and look at some of the different shots, maybe turn off the levels here, we can see that it's a now a bluish tone to it. And we can try even a different preset. So Colorama, let's try Vintage Flames. This one's a bit more abstract, right? But it looks really cool. I mean, in, in some projects, I'm sure this would be totally useful. This is an awesome way to create cool textures. Again, just doing a before and after. This is just leaves on a tree. And then with Colorama, it's this much trippier effect. 
I wanna actually show the project file briefly here just to show the Colorama effects I used for the bike animation at the beginning of this video, which is on these four adjustment layers here. And so just starting with this first one here, if I go here, there's some other color effects like extra levels and Lumetri color and everything, but the beating heart of this look here is the Colorama. So if I go into the output cycle, we can see the color palette that I used here. So if I turn off Colorama, we can see that it's much more normal colors. And you can see the footage in the background and the bike, they're more normal colors. But when I turn on the Colorama, it has that much more stylized look. And it's the exact same, just different color palettes for the different clips here. So this one is this color palette. The third shot is this color palette. The fourth shot is a more muted night tone. And we saw this on the other example as well. So you can see sort of the development of these actual color palettes. Okay, onto a couple of the other settings I wanna to touch on just very briefly. There's obviously a lot of other settings that you can go through and experiment with, and I would highly recommend doing so because there is actually a lot that you can do in Colorama, but I wanna just point out a few that sometimes I mess with. The first one is cycle repetitions. And so by default set to one, but you can actually drag it to less and it'll show less of the palette or if you go over it, you can have it repeat multiple times. So there's kind of like a solarized, very trippy look that you can mess with here and you can do a ton of repetitions. Again, I would probably use this sparingly, but it is cool that you can mess with this effect. I'm gonna set it back to one here. The other one that I sometimes mess with is interpolate palette. So if I click this, it'll just chunk it into colors without any of the actual gradient of it. So this is also useful if you have maybe specific color values that you wanna map to without a gradient. You could do this, or if you want a very posterized color look like this, this is one way to achieve it. Next is in the modify dropdown here. You can change what color channel or what it's actually affecting. So by default, again, it's set to all, but we can change it to red and it'll only map on the red channel, or you could change it to green or some of these combos. So red and blue. And so this looks really cool. There's like a now a totally different palette than the one we just had. You could do by lightness and this will change it. It kind of messed with the saturation here or something like that. The saturation here, getting some odd effects. But again, there's so much that you can do, so many combinations that you can make using the settings built into the effect. And then finally, the, the most straightforward one is the blend with original here, which just kind of dictates the strength of it. So at 100% blend with original, it's just the original. At zero, it's full strength, and you can kind of just tweak the amount. So if you want a half blend, you can set it to 50%. And now we have half the original color, half the gradient. Finally, let's move on to saving your own presets and installing the ones that I made. It's super easy to actually save this. All you have to do is click the effect here, Colorama, and go up to animation and save animation preset. And I actually already have a whole bunch of presets saved uh, in a user presets folder where I made an extra Colorama folder. But in the case that all you see is this and you don't actually have a user presets folder, you can go ahead and make one. If you do have this, you can make a subfolder like I did for Colorama, just so it's a little bit more organized. It's not necessary. You could just put them here if you want. But in the Colorama folder, I have all my Colorama presets. And my naming structure is to just go with Colorama and a number, and then just a name to remember by, which can be whatever you want. So for this one, let's go with Colorama 20, and let's name it Speed Red, because it doesn't really matter what the name is. That's good enough and click save. And that's it, we saved the preset. To install presets, it's in the same spot. So going up to animation, save animation preset, you wouldn't see these presets, but what you can do in the user presets section is make that Colorama folder like this, and then just click and drag the Colorama presets here into this folder, and that's it. You'll have your presets loaded in After Effects. So there's a few ways to actually apply the preset. Uh, the first one is to just click your adjustment layer and go to animation, apply animation preset and select the one that you want. This is the really slow way of doing it. Alternatively, if you have the effects and presets panel open here, you can click the three little lines right here and click refresh list and it should update your animation presets here at the top in this folder. So under user presets, Colorama, we have all of the presets saved here. If you use FX console like I do, the way to refresh the list is to just bring up FX console, click this the gear icon to bring up settings, click cancel, and it'll update that list. So when we type in Colorama, just like so, we can see we have our 20th updated one here and all the other presets as well. And then you can just click and it'll apply that preset. That's it, that's the entire workflow for making presets with Colorama. I hope this is a useful trick that you end up using in your animations. And if you do, definitely tag me either on Instagram or Twitter, it's at Skymography. I would love to see what you end up creating. All right, see you in the next one.